if you have the base, the passion, everybody have a chance to get to the World Championship. But it's how much you want it, how much you put in, want to put into work, how much you want to take care of the people around you who can actually help you to push you to the limit and, and get there. Everything is possible. You have to believe in it, you have to work, and nothing is easy. Do you like I did, you know, just try everything you can. If you give 110%, you can't lose, can you? I've just arrived here at Peter Solberg's house. He's not actually here at the moment, so I'm going to try and make the most of it and I'm going to go and explore. I'm so excited to be here. Obviously, Peter Solberg is a huge name in the car world. I've met him a few times before and he's such a nice guy. I started off basically driving on the roads and the streets, sliding around, making obstacles and courses in car parks, kind of like Gymkhana, but before it kind of generated itself a Gymkhana grid, I was already doing it in car parks. And then now I'm a 2014, 2015 and 16 Gymkhana grid champion. I'm looking at new ways to push forward. I'm going to try my hand at rallycross. I'm going to start off in the British Rallycross racing a Suzuki Swift um, and try and move forward through the ranks and to get somewhere near, maybe, going towards like, the World Series. I'm here to, to kind of learn the skills of Rallycross from the main man himself. So we're out in Sweden in the middle of nowhere, um, surrounded by woods and there's actually a WRC stage right behind me. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, so, just in time. Fantastic, yeah? Traffic was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fire in. Years old and up to 18, we built 55 cars, me and my brother. Yeah. But that's what was for autocross. Yeah. Roll cages, all the engines, everything. So you, you welding and the... we did everything since we were 10 years old. And of course the toilet, Rally Monte Carlo toilet. It sounds <laughs> it's, it sounds so good. A very exclusive toilet. <laughs> everything around and I also keep the people on the second floor because communication is much faster instead of going into the offices to shout you shout or you can be on top of it yeah and everything it's about time time is money and time is uh, yeah. you know you can't have time to lose uh, no, anything no. you know I have an office, I will show you later, and I have been there two times <laughs> in, since 2009. <laughs> it's an office for show-off. <laughs> yeah, look, so here we have uh, a little bit different cars. Very different. Yeah. I have a lot of cars here, but I have also a lot in the, uh, the museum in Norway yeah. for, uh, for the Norwegian government. Yeah. And I have also some cars on the farm back home. They stopped the factory yeah. where they're making cars. And the president said, I only do this once, he said. It cost them one and a half million euro to stop it for uh, 
I think it was uh, five minutes. Wow. So all the people came and I had a speech. Thanks for building the cars uh, when we went uh, world champion. And then Subaru said, well, after this victory, we make a Peter Subaru edition car. They made 555 cars. He said, Peter, you can choose which number you want. So one more car. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so I really want to have chassis number zero, zero, zero. I said, you know, yeah. can you make that? You can make everything. <laughs> so they make the chassis zero, 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 and my core driver got chassis number one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've seen you know, videos and stuff of this place. Um, but to actually be here, like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's amazing. And to have, obviously, the main man himself show me around is absolutely unreal. Quite speechless, which is quite something for me, to be honest. The thing is, in my life, it's all about enjoying your life, you know, in every situation. And when you are with positive, good people, who want to talk, who want to listen, then I'm very positive to give a lot of advice and enjoy and having fun with it, you know. Luke is, is a humble guy that wants a lot, and I, I like that a lot. Ripping around on the quads in the Solberg's garden. So we was racing around with Petter, you know, being chief marshal of the track. Racing around together, putting laps down, getting faster and faster, and just having a great time. It was better than I thought, actually. It was. Uh, sometimes in some corners, I thought he was like, should push more, but he didn't, so he was fast anyway. Uh, you can see a lot in people's eyes and just the uh, kind of hunger he has, the curiosity, uh, wanting to do something new, uh, going after a new challenge. I think that's something that's really similar. To hang out with Petter has been incredible. It has been absolutely awesome. He's such a nice fella and his family is amazing. Welcomed us in to his home, fed us great food, um, and we've had a good time hanging out and having great fun. We're here at the final round of the British Rallycross at Croft. I've got used to the circuit pretty much straight away. Um, such a fun little circuit, half dirt, half tarmac. The aim is to finish you know, first in everything you do, but the, get a good time in your heat, and then we can move on hopefully to semi-finals, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, into the finals. It didn't go as well as what I hoped. I mean, I still managed to finish second in my semi-final, which put me on the front row for the final. I mean, for my only like third rallycross event, it's fantastic. But for me, I want to push on. I want rallycross more and more um, and see what we can do maybe next year.